G'day folks, uh, back again for session three of, uh, of a live stream of creating a scientific paper from scratch. Uh, for these particular live streams, I'm going to be uh, looking at um, uh, coding, and I'm coding and just checking that we're getting the live stream. Yep, we are good to go. Okay, so in this particular, uh, for, if you're interested in what I'm doing, I would suggest you check out the, uh, the blog post link, which explains uh, what the heck I'm actually doing and uh, why I'm recording myself uh, putting together this paper. Um, but in short, uh, what I'm looking at is ways of creating synthetic data sets. Synthetic data sets are, are ways in which we can actually share our data without sharing the original data. And the way that we can do this is um, we can actually be... i um, just checking one thing. Yeah, the way that we can do this is um, we can um, we can approximate the original data set and we can approximate the, um, the relationships between the variables and the overall structure. Um, that includes the same means, um, the same measures of variance, and the same relationship between uh, between variables, which is uh, which is super important. Um, and uh, this is this is one way that we can actually encourage the sharing of data, which is going to be uh, which, which is a way that we can actually uh, improve science because there are some times that you that you uh, that you read papers and you have no idea what the authors are doing um, when it comes to their actual analysis scripts. Um, so yeah, this this is going to be um, a, a really cool way, and uh, this. Uh, this package is actually surprisingly uh, straightforward to use. Well, it, it seems to be at least. Um, and so if I can put together a paper which actually explains how to share synthetic data sets within biobehavioral sciences, um, I think this can really take science forward, um, particularly because one thing that you can do is um, if you can work with these synthetic data sets, you can uh, actually run analyses on these data. And if you do find uh, interesting results, um, of course, you can't be sure that uh, these are true results because it's not the real data, but you can actually send your analysis script to the original authors and go, hey, have you thought about running this? And they can run it on the original data set and actually confirm um, that you get the same sort of results. So it is really interesting in the context of hypothesis generation, which I think is very, very cool. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is we're going to go through... And, uh, yeah, okay. So, we, uh, I'm going to go through and just do a brief summary of what I did yesterday and uh, get everyone, or even get myself up to speed because I haven't uh, really looked at it until yesterday. So, what we're doing is we're importing a data set. This is an already public data set which looks at the role of intranasal oxytocin or how intranasal oxytocin increases self-reports of spirituality. Uh, participants were either administered oxytocin or placebo and asked 40 minutes later, uh, because that is when oxytocin levels in the brain are increased according to CSF levels, um, how spiritual How spiritual do you feel? And uh, and participants, uh, what's reported was that participants who actually were given oxytocin, um, uh, once you account for religious affiliation, actually have uh, increased spirituality. And uh, this is a public data set, which is fantastic. So what I'm doing is I'm using this public data set. Um, I'm using this public data set in, in a way to actually verify and compare the synthesized data that it, that it creates versus the original data set. So this is the first data set that I'm trying, but I'm going to be trying a few different data sets just to see how robust the package is for the sorts of data sets that we do get within oxytocin research. Because as an oxytocin researcher, I really do want to share my data uh, but quite often, I'm working with clinical populations, so there are really important um, privacy concerns there, and these are legitimate concerns. Um, but um, by actually putting this, uh, by actually having this package, what we can do is we can uh, we can create and we can share our data for in sensitive populations, um, and uh, and with that with that consideration or. Uh, while also uh, considering privacy. Okay, so what we've done is we are importing our data set using a typical function from reader, which is within the tidyverse package, or package, which is a set of set of packages. And okay, so we're going to set um, our seed so we can reproduce our synthetic data. And to actually do the synthetic data, it's a really easy function. So once you load, the actual package is called synthpop, and uh, once you load this... Uh, it's, it's, it's just called SYN, that's it. And you put your data set in, you set your seed, and you run and you have your synthetic data set. And then to actually see the, or to test the validity, you can compare your um, uh, you can compare your simulated data against your original data. So we're doing this here. And it's going to come up with some nice plots so you can see the distribution. 
There we go. Okay, so the light blue is the observed and the dark blue is the synthetic. I actually changed this. Um, and you can actually see that, uh, yeah, for instance, for religious affiliation, the distribution. Um, so these are um, um, on, on the uh, on the y-axis. These are the, the the raw counts. So for instance, there was about nine people who scored a one in the observed and uh, ten in the synthetic data set. But you can see the actual patterns are very similar. Uh, and the main outcome that we're interested in is this one here, SPI one L, which basically stands for spirituality. Um, um, I think L stands for lab or during the lab, and you can see the distributions are quite similar. Uh, okay. There are quite a, a few options as well. We'll go to the help packages when it comes to compare. So we can go through and uh, we can adjust um, the visually how it looks, the line type, whether it's a, a straight, uh, whether it's just a, a normal line or a dotted line or a dashed line, the width, the colors. And one thing I have adjusted is the colors as well because I think they're a little bit nicer than the default. And the other thing that I've done as well is... Um, I've actually loaded uh, Cowplot, which is a super handy um, add-on package to ggplot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, I'm going to unload Cowplot. So now it's detached, and then I'm going to run the same analysis to show you the difference. Okay, this looks similar, so I'm not quite sure what has happened there. Okay, that didn't work, but that's cool. We'll continue. Okay, so what we've done here is uh, I've run a typical t-test between uh, to look at the uh, the impact of oxytocin condition on spirituality. These are the results here. Uh, non-significant p-value 0.26, t-statistic of 1.13. And in order to make the comparisons or in order to, to compare um, how well our synthetic data set works with our models, um, you need to make, uh, you need to actually compare linear models. And with pretty much any statistical or most statistical common tests, you there is a linear model equivalent. And this is a cool uh, blog post which I linked to uh, previously um, uh, by Jonas Lindelöf, and uh, it's it's fantastic. Just go through this, and this is actually what I'm referring to to create. Uh, so if we go to independent t-test, this is the code that I used um, to actually replicate the t-tests here. So I'll go back. Uh, okay. So this is a linear model equivalent of the t-test. And the results are the same. Okay, so now that we have the same results, um, we can actually compare. So this is the linear model, the normal linear model for the t-test, which is comparing uh, both groups on spirituality. Run that. Okay, so you can see it's the same t-value, same p-value. But now what I'm doing here is I'm creating the synthetic model, which runs off, notice here, data, OT sim. So this is off the synthetic data that we, that, that we created. This is the same kind of structure when it comes to the linear model. And then we can actually do that. And we can compare. How these two go. So we have some statistics here, which say or which suggest that um, there is almost complete overlap, complete overlap. Uh, in the confidence intervals between the, uh, I'll show you here. This is really cool. So the dark blue is the synthetic model, uh, and the uh, the light blue is the observed model. These are almost identical. So the synthetic data set, uh, uh, when it comes to this particular model, is almost the same. So if I was to to share this, uh, for, uh, let's say I had this data set and I was to share this, um, I would and and my main outcome was in fact this. Um, I would be very, very confident that the, um, extremely confident, in fact, that the synthetic data has exactly the same properties as the original data set for this main outcome measure. So this is really, really cool. 
Um, and of course, you can you can adjust the, the the width of these lines and the colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, but looking at the actual statistics here, we can see the p-value is, is is almost one. It's approaching one, um, or very close to one, to be more accurate. And the confidence interval interlap the confidence interval overlap is um, is extremely high. Um, so that is really really cool. Uh, so yeah. Hopefully, but not all data is like that. Uh, the main outcome for the actual study was uh, was looking at uh, looking at an ANCOVA. Uh, so let's run the ANCOVA. These are the results here. So for for oxytocin condition, um, there was an effect once uh, once you account for religious affiliation of 0.03, which is exactly what was reported in the original data set, which is good to see. This is the linear model equivalent, and we see exactly the same result. Cool. Okay, so we've confirmed that we've got the linear model equivalent, and we've got the same result there. Let's look at our test of synthesis. This is uh, creating the synthetic. So this is the same model here, using our synthesized data set into this object. And then we are comparing the two. That is pretty good, pretty good. Um, so it's worth noting that for the synthetic model, the effect of oxytocin condition wins once you hold this constant is actually not statistically significant. It's worth noting that the original um, effect was 0.03, so it was on the border of significance. So with the synthetic model, it wasn't. Uh, I'm assuming that if you were to run a uh, or use a, use a different seed, or use a different seed, or use different synthetic data, you might get something different. But this shows you how how it's almost a test of sensitivity. Um, pardon me, in, in in one sense. But regardless, the patterns still work the same. So we still see the same sort of pattern, and it's it's still quite similar, despite the fact that the synthetic data set isn't significant. Now, I don't think this is too much of an issue. Um, when you're looking at the uh, re religious aff affiliation, uh, of course, there's a massive effect of religious affiliation on how, spirit how spiritual you, you feel. Um, people who uh, claim to be religiously affiliated, of course, are more likely to, uh, or prob probably more likely to, uh, to, to say that they uh, feel, feel spiritual. So that, that effect is, uh, is quite strong, um, and these things are also quite similar. If we look back at the statistics... We can see for this effect, yeah, that they're non-significant, so that's fine. Uh, and the confidence interval overlap uh, is also at around sort of 0.8, which is which isn't too bad. So that's pretty good. Let's uh, let's check out correlations. So this is running normal correlation. This is between age and spirituality. Um, you, you may expect there to be a relationship here, but uh, it doesn't look like there is p-value of 0.75 and a sample estimate of 0.04. We are running the equivalent linear model. Um, we've got this scale function here because if we go back to Jonas Jonas's um, code, what you can see is that if you don't do the scaling, you're going to get the same um, you're going to get the same p-value and the same t statistic, but you're not going to get the same um, r statistic. Uh, but then, if you um, use uh, yeah, if you use a the scale, then you're actually going to get the same R statistic for, for for greater accuracy. All right, we got that. Um, Credit the linear equivalent. Now we're doing the synthesized model. Comparing. This is for correlations. Data looks good. Plots look good as well so pretty pretty wide confidence intervals but um, there's a ton of overlap there this is uh, this is looking good okay so we have correlations and covers and the t-tests for this given data set and the synthesized data or the synthesized models look very similar. So not only does the data look very similar, let's just go back and bring this up again. Oh yeah, so this is how you actually uh, pick the colors. I'm gonna show you a cool thing. Uh, what's it called? Color palette. 
So if you're looking for cool colors, um, there are heaps of websites where you can actually just generate colors that uh, that match and go well together. Let's see how well this loads. No, I don't want to watch a tutorial. Uh, for this particular website, you press spacebar and it gives you new combinations and then all you need to do is uh, copy that, the hex code, and put it in there. And that is a really quick way to find nice colors or once it loads. That, by chance, happened to be a very similar color. We'll go for orange. There we go. So you can see that's just an easy way of changing colors, but let's go back, undo, undo, and run that again. There we go. Okay. Ankovas correlations, t tests, uh, that is looking good. Um, the other thing is, I want to try looking at a different data set. So I found yesterday a cool data set uh, here via Mendeley Data. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like this was um, part of a published paper, but data is data, regardless. Um, and this was found through do Google Doodle through Google Dataset Search, and this is looking at uh, oxytocin levels and empathy and oxytocin single nucleotide polymorphism, polymorphisms, otherwise known as SNPs. Import this data. Uh, set this seed here. Compare the two. Looking pretty good. Distributions look very similar, more or less. I'm pretty satisfied with that. This is the correlation between oxytocin concentrations from the blood or saliva. Let's have a look. Plasma, yep, yeah, blood. Uh, better than saliva. Uh, and the RMIT, a measure of theory of mind. Something weird has happened. Okay, no significant relationship. Run that just to confirm, 0 0.46, 0 0.46, yep. Now we're comparing the two. Okay, wow, these are these are pretty much the same as well. It's performing pretty well. This is good. So now we have two different data sets uh, that seem to be behaving quite similarly. Let's see what else we have. BDAT. Just for a sanity check, let's look at the relationship. Not even a sanity check. Let's look at the uh, the difference in uh, RMIT performance between males and females. Generally speaking, pe females perform better. It hasn't that hasn't always been shown? But let's let's have a look. Uh, sex. Any missing data? No. Okay. So, uh, t comment our data so I know what the heck I'm doing later. T test. Cop we'll copy and paste from. From the top, 
Hopefully this doesn't bite me in the ass. Let's find out. T-test. Uh, are we going to call this um, B, B alpha blood, uh, RMT, and EQ? Data equals B dot. Does it? Is it B dot? Yes. Uh, Six. Army T. What do we got? No difference. Uh, females twenty five, males twenty four. Very, very similar. Okay, there you go. I think I found similar data. I, I've used the Army T looking at the relationship between that and um, autonomic nervous system function. I don't think there was a sex difference, but that was that was a long, long time ago. Let us run the equivalent linear model. Um, Hope you're having a nice day. I just came back from the beach with my family. Now the baby's asleep. Wife's asleep, I think. So I'm getting some uh, getting some coding done. Okay. Uh, no, that was the wrong way around. Silly me. Okay, T value minus point five six seven. A little bit different. I think I need a bit of coffee for this. Okay, let's look at this again. Five eight for the T. Oh, that's the same. Point five seven. Point five. Yeah, a little bit of difference, but I think that's just sampling error. Point five six three. Very, very similar. I wonder if that's due to any weirdness with missing data. No, there's no missing data. Let's check out the documentation. This could be a variances thing. Ooh. Let's try something. Off to Google.
Yep, I did mean that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this looks easy. Isn't this just what coding's about? Just Googling stuff. Pa packages this. Lawstat. No. Uh, I think I have that loaded already. Nope, of course it's not going to work. There we go. Um, but I have a feeling that's, uh, okay. Let's just try this. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's a variances thing. So let me just confirm that variances are indeed. Yeah, so they're all right. All right, it's a variances thing. Cool. So now we now we have. I'll have to go back and double check that for the other t tests. There you go. Sometimes you only find out stuff by playing around with the different data sets. Uh, so these things are the same, and that is correct. Results are the same. Check. Now let us. Uh, no. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, RMT by sex GLM. There, there. I'm bad with naming. Maybe there's a better way. I'm sure there is. Running that. Get the summary. Synthetic. Um, RMET by sex. Data is the synthetic data set which is this one. Run that. Run that. Ooh. Compare that against the original data set. B 
copy that. Okay, that did not perform well. Let me just confirm that I did that right. Yeah. All right, so it looks like for that particular context. We'll, let's try that with um, EQ as well. Just swap around. I know there's a quick way of doing this. for EQ, almost a significant difference with the females performing higher on average. Same. Similar. Okay, so these seem to be performing better. So if I was reporting this data set, then uh, if I was using RMET as the outcome measure, I would actually say this that the synthetic data set uh, isn't as precise. But if I was actually using uh, EQ as the outcome measure, then it seems that there seems to be a lot of uh, precision between the two measures. Okay. Cool. Now that I've added the the cowpot theme, I think the um the plots look slightly better compared to uh compared to the standard ones. But I mean, everyone has their own preferences there. There we go. Okay, it's looking pretty good. All right, let's look at another data set. Uh, I found one last night, which was on collective decision-making. I don't remember where I actually found this one, but I think I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, it's a few different things. As well. So I think that blood one's gonna be a nice demonstration that um, there's different types of performance depending on the measures and how well the um, synthetic data worked. Just as an illustration, I want to see whether by increasing the number of sets, this actually increases the precision.
So here this creates one set. Let's uh, let's create five. Take a little bit longer. That's fine. So this is comparing the observed against the synthetic, and the synthetic is an average of the five data sets. That's pretty good. Run this again. Oh, what happened here? Yep. Yeah, so this is for the original one between... Which one was this one? EQ. And sex, yeah. So that, that, was, that was pretty much the same. So that is looking a little bit better now. Let's have a quick look at this data. I'm trying to remember where I got this from. <laughs> That's all right. I know I bookmarked it somewhere. Something about oxytocin and collective decision making. I think it was from a PLOS paper from memory. Oh, don't even remember. <laughs> I'll have to look at that another time. Okay. I am going to wrap up this section or this uh, testing session now. Um, hopefully, maybe tomorrow, um, I'll get to uh, a new data set and uh, potentially starting to actually write up the paper itself. And uh, if there's anything more terrifying than coding live, it would be writing live. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll be back again tomorrow.